Unlock the mysteries of Germany's past, its diverse landscapes, and rich culture in a journey through time. From Charlemagne's ambitious conquests to the dark shadows of Nazi rule, explore the heart of Europe's powerhouse. Did you know that the German flag's colors symbolize perseverance, bravery, and generosity? Join us for a deeper dive into Germany's story. In the ancient times, Germanic people occupied the territories of what is now northern Germany. To the south lived Celtic-speaking populations. Between the 1st century BC and 1st century AD, the Germanic population began expanding southward towards Celtic lands, and the locals slowly began being Germanized instead of being displaced. Roman contact with Germanic people began in 50 BC when Julius Caesar was pacifying the Gallic regions. There, he discovered a new group of people across the Rhine River. It was only in 12 to 9 BC that Romans came into violent confrontation with the Germanics under Nero Germanicus. Roman Germanic relations soured from then on, and one famous battle, the Battle of the Teutoburg in 9 AD, would highlight this relationship between Rome and the Germanic peoples. During the battle, Germanic forces under Arminius were able to defeat and massacre three Roman legions. However, constant interaction with the Romans eventually led to them coexisting with each other. Trade routes were established, and certain traditions and products were even exchanged. The Romans even had alliances with the Germanic people having them act as frontier guards in exchange for autonomy. The Western world would be transformed again when a new group of nomadic people from the East came ravaging Eastern Europe. These were the Huns. The Huns proved to be destructive for many settled Germanic people, and they were pushed in droves towards the already collapsing Roman Empire forcefully. This was known as the Great Migration Period. The population was too much for the empire to handle, and thus began the hostilities between the Visigoths and several other Germanic peoples who were also being pushed towards the territories of the empire due to the Hunnic menace. These Germanic migrants eventually established their own states in what was now the ruins of the old Western Roman Empire. And from there came the birth of the early stages of medieval Europe. The Merovingian Franks, residents of Romanized Gaul and Germania, established a foothold in the region when their leader, Clovis I, converted to Christianity. His son, Tedebert I, conquered much of what is now German territory during his reign from 535 to 548. The Merovingians were replaced by the Carolingians influentially. They rose to power around 620. One such Carolingian, Charles Martel, was even able to divide the new kingdom between his two sons. Such was their influence. His son, Pippin, would eventually assume the throne of the Franks in 751 after appealing to the Pope. Pippin eventually had a son, one of the greatest leaders in history, Charlemagne. Charlemagne ruled half of the Frankish throne when his father died in 768, and when his brother Carloman died 771, he was able to assume total control over the entirety of the kingdom. Nye became its own state called East Francia, ruled by Louis the German. He managed to expand the borders of the fledgling kingdom into what was to be the borders of medieval Germany. He was succeeded by his son, Charles III, who was considered incompetent, which led to constant civil wars and revolts amongst the general populace. The incompetence of the Carolingian rulers necessitated a change on how settlements should be defended, and thus arose the duchies where military, economic, and political power were placed in the hands of local leaders. These duchies would in time make up what was going to be the Holy Roman Empire. The Holy Roman Empire highlighted the autonomy of local settlements, but still functioning, albeit separately, under one system. 
Some of them even grew into large cities. This empire relished in trade and expansion, the most under the rule of the House of Hohenstaufen. The empire would eventually be dissolved in 1806 during the Napoleonic Wars. The Holy Roman Empire's history is long and complicated. If you want to know more about it, let me know in the comments below and I'll make a video on it. After the dissolution of the Holy Roman Empire and Napoleon's eventual defeat, the Congress of Vienna founded the German Confederation, made up of 39 sovereign states. Revolutions instituted many changes in the political landscape of the German people, most especially ideas of democracy and freedom. Monarchical support was diminishing, and in 1862, the king, William I, appointed Otto von Bismarck as Minister President of Prussia. Otto von Bismarck helped in expanding the influence and military might of Prussia, and thus the Northern German Confederation was born. Unification of Germany soon followed after, and von Bismarck was declared as a Chancellor of Germany. After the assassination of the Crown Prince of Austria, Franz Ferdinand, in 1914, Germany was dragged into war with France, the United Kingdom, and all the other Allied states that opposed what was called the Central Powers. The Great War proved to be damaging to the economy of Germany. However, the 1920s ushered in the Golden Twenties, which was an era of artistic innovation and liberal cultural life. The Great Depression that massively affected the world economy also affected the country in such a way that putsches left and right called for changes in Germany's government rule. And many parties rose during this period. One particular party would mark itself as history's most infamous, the Nazi party under a charismatic leader named Adolf Hitler. Nazi Germany ruled over Germany beginning with Hitler's appointment as chancellor on January 30, 1933, until the defeat of German forces by the Allies during World War II in 1945. Some of the worst atrocities were committed against Jewish and even non-Jewish civilians and military personnel during this period in what was called the Holocaust, or the Final Solution. It was a dark time in German history, one that should never be forgotten. After the Second World War, Germany was divided between Allied and Soviet control. That is, until the fall of the Berlin Wall in the 1989 revolutions. The process of reunification was not immediate and took place between November 9, 1989 and March 15, 1991, when Germany was finally reunified. Today, Germany has a GDP of $4 trillion, making it one of the leading economic powerhouses in Europe. In fact, it's considered the backbone of Europe's heavy industries. Services constitute 69% of the GDP, while industry is at 31%, agriculture is at a measly 0.7%. Agricultural products include milk, sugar beets, wheat, barley, potatoes, pork, rapeseed, maize, rye, and triticale. Industries where Germany shines are iron, steel, coal, cement, chemicals, machinery, vehicles, machine tools, electronics, automobiles, food and beverages, shipbuilding, and textiles. The German flag is made up of three horizontal stripes, black, red, and gold from the top to the bottom. The colors of the flag have no clear significance, but they were mostly attributed to the colors of the uniform of the Lutzo Volunteer Corps. Today, the most accepted meanings of the colors are as follows. Black for perseverance, red represents bravery and strength, and gold signifies generosity. The capital of Germany is located in Berlin. It has a total land area of 357,000 square kilometers or 146,000 square miles. The country is bordered by many other countries, Austria, Belgium, Czechia, Denmark, France, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Poland, and Switzerland. 
Germany's terrain is varied from valleys to alpine mountains to flatlands and finally to the shores of the north. The highest point in the country is in the Zugspitze, which stands around 3,000 meters or 10,000 feet above sea level. The lowest point is located at Neuendorf Bay Wilster, which is approximately 4 meters below sea level or 13 feet below sea level. This variation in terrain also means a variety in weather. However, the climate is generally temperate. The average temperature is 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Germany is populated by around 84 million inhabitants with around 85.4% being ethnic Germans. However, different populations also live inside the country, such as Turkish, Polish, Syrians, and Ukrainians. The national language is German, however. There are a number of officially recognized languages, including, but not limited to, Danish, Frisian, Sorbian, and so on. A large portion of Germans do not adhere to any religious organization or denomination. They make up 44% of the population. Roman Catholics comprise 25%, while Protestants, 23%. Around 4% are Muslims. The median age of Germans is around 47 years old, making it an aging population. And now onto the famous dishes that put Germany on the culinary map of the world. First off, let's sate that appetite with simple brat and brotchen. Bread is a staple in many cuisines worldwide, and Germany is no exception. Want a quick fix for when you're walking around a park? Why not try currywurst, sausages, chips, and ketchup? What's not to like? Next up, we have kartoffel puffer, shallow fried pancakes made from grated potatoes, egg, and flour. And of course, last but not least, schnitzel, fried tenderized meat covered in egg, flour, and breadcrumbs. Much like other countries, a lot of personalities also call Germany their home. Here are some of them. The man, the myth, the legend, who discovered the theory of relativity, Albert Einstein was born in Germany. The famous nihilist philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche was also German. Another great philosopher, the great mind behind Marxism and communism, Karl Marx, was Prussian German. Johann Sebastian Bach, who is still one of the greatest composers of all time, was also German born. If you enjoyed this video on Germany, you'll love this next one.